Hi guys and welcome to another Dilly theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we're going to start this little series off. We're going to build this little one page site we've got here. Got a little slider there on the hero section. Got a little about us section. Services section. Team section. Little project section. Testimonial section with a little slider there. Portfolio section. And finally, a contact section with a contact form, some info, and a full width live Google map. Really easy to do. We're going to do this just with the Divi theme itself with the inbuilt features. There's no extra plugins or coding involved in this today. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new page and we'll start from scratch. I'm going to go up to the top to new and to page. Give our page a name, let's call it a new home. Call yours what you like. And obviously I want to use the Divi Builder with this today. I'm going to build from scratch. I'm going to create a new section here by clicking on it, hitting the little blue button, because I'm going to use a full width section for our slider today. And I want to use a full width slider module down here. Full width modules, you get a few less modules, but they're built for full width. Great. Now, before I actually do anything else, I'm going to get rid of this default section at the top. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to click on it. Again, blue tab for a section. I'm simply going to delete it like that. Okay, well, let's go in and start making a couple of slides. I'm going to click on the field. Dark tab for the module itself. Here's the two slides it starts out with right there. I'm going to delete the second one. We'll work on the first one here. Obviously, put your title in there. Whatever it is you want to say. Now, if you want to have a button, simply type what you want your button to say down here. If you don't want a button, just simply delete that and leave it blank. As you can see, the button's disappeared. Well, as you can't see, the button's disappeared. <laughs> Let's put that back in there. I'm going to have a button with mine. Obviously, down below, you want to have your content, whatever it is you want to say about your first site on this slide. And this is a regular text field, so you can bold, italicize, align, make headings if you want to, and add media. Let's put my little logo just above here, perhaps. So I'm going to scoot that down a couple. I'm going to add media. And I've got my little light colored logo somewhere on here. There it is. Now, if you don't, you can simply drag and drop your logo into this media library here. So let's select that one. I'll pop it in there. Now, it's a little bit big for me. If you want to make it smaller or bigger, you can actually just click on it, drag it to the size that you want it. That's going to work for me. Great. Well, let's move on down here. You can choose to add an image or a mid video. If you do, it'll appear on the left-hand side, and I'll demonstrate that in a, when we build our next slide there. Down below, we've got the link. Now, here we've got the button link, so put wherever you want to take your visitors with the button there. Choose whether you want to open it in the same window or another site. Always best practice if you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If you're going off-site to somebody else's, open it in a new tab so your site stays open. Now you can link the whole module, so if they click anywhere else, you can put a different link in here or even the same link if you want. The same rules apply. Well, let's have a look at our background here. And I'm going to mix a couple of colors, I think. Let's use a blue color there. And let's add an image. And you can do it with a gradient too, if you want to mix these up. And you've also got options to add a background video, a background pattern, or a background mask. I'm going to use a color and an image. Again, just drag your images up here and load them. I'm going to use, I think that's the one I used before. Now to make this stand out a bit better, we've got a couple of options. I can blend it with that blue color, which I'm going to do here. Or when we move on to the design tab, you can choose to use an overlay. But I'm going to blend this. So I'm going to roll down to under the image here. At the bottom, we've got background image blend. And there's a lot of different options here. I'm going to use multiply when I do that. You'll see it's multiplying that blue color and our writing stands out an awful lot better there. 
Well, let's move on. I'm going to move on to my design tab here. And here's what I was saying about an overlay. If I put it on here, you won't see much difference because of the color I've got there, but it should darken it down slightly. And you can choose your own colors. That's the default sort of darkening mode right there. That works for me. I'm going to take that off though, so that works fine without it for me. Navigation. Well, we've only got one, so it's not showing up at the moment, but you've got arrows either side and pagination dots down the bottom. And you can choose your colors here. Image wise, I'm not going to adjust my image. I'm quite happy with it where it is and I'm not going to put any borders or anything on there or box shadow. I'm going to move on down. Here we've got our text. Title text, let's make that a little bit bigger and you can go into your text, the simple text right here and do everything at once if you wanted to change colors, light to dark, etc., and give it text shadow. Or you can go in down below and do them individually. So I want to do my title text. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger and perhaps have it semi bold. And you can roll it up and down. Now, common to most Divi modules, if you roll over the dark writing, you'll see some little icons appear. If you want to check how it's going to look on tablet and mobile, roll over, you see a little mobile phone type icon. Click on it and we can look at it on desktop, on tablet, and on mobile. And that's not too bad. I don't mind that breaking into two lines there, but if you wanted to, you could have separate sizes for each of these. I'm gonna take mine back to the desktop. Okay, just to make it stand out a little bit more, I'm gonna add a bit of text shadow behind it. Great. Let's roll down. You can do similar for the body text there. I'm gonna leave mine just as it is on the default text, but I'm sure you may know this, but Divi has a crazy amount of fonts. It really does have a huge amount. Just click on one, roll over it, and it'll show you an example. I'm going to leave mine on the default, like I say. Okay, well, let's move down a little bit more. Here's our button, and you can custom style your button however you wish by turning the custom styles for button on. Choose the text size. I'm going to leave mine just as it is there. Button text color is fine. I'm actually going to give it a color background and perhaps take away that border. So we've got button background here. I've been caught using the sort of purples and blues on this site. I'll stick to that. So I'm going to make the background purple. I'm going to take that white border away by just taking the border down to zero there. And also we can change color on hover. It's got a little icon when you hover over it. Let's change it to blue perhaps on hover. To do that, again, this is common to most Divi modules. Hover over the dark writing of the thing you want to affect, button background. If there's an arrow there, there is in our case, we can set a desktop state when your mouse is not on it and a hover state when the mouse is on it. So for the hover state, I'm going to make that button blue. Great. Rolling down a bit more, I kind of like that button to be a pill shaped button rather than a square one. So we can do that with border radius down below. And let's just give it say 30 pixels or something that will give it nice rounded corners obviously the higher amount you do it the more rounded it'll be just put in the 30 it'll put the picks in there for you okay let's roll down a bit more you can choose a font if you want to i'm going to leave mine just like it is i don't want to have a button icon when we roll over it so let's just switch this on and flip it back to off that is now gone which is great Button alignment center, that works. And I will add a little bit of text shadow to that just to make it stand out slightly more on that button. If you want to push your button up or down, you can add margin top and bottom. So if I put 50 there, you can see it pushes that button down. I'm going to leave mine just as it is. If you wanted to make it taller or wider, you can use do that with padding. Again, if I put say 30 picks, You'll see it adds 30 picks to the top. You can hit the chain and do the similar for the bottom if you want to. Same with the left and right if you want to make it bigger or smaller. I'm going to take mine away. I'm happy with the way it was there. And again, I'm just going to add a little box shadow on the bottom of it just to darken it out there. Let it stand off the page. Let's move down a little bit more now. We've got our sizing here. Well, we can actually set the width of the content here, which is just what I want to do. For me, that's rolling a bit wide. I want to pull it in a little bit. So let's use our little slider here. We'll drag it in till it looks about right for us. That's fine. 
I think also I'll take a little space away from my little logo there. To do that, we'll just go back into the content, to the text where we put that logo in. And I can actually just delete one of the spaces I've got there by hitting delete just after it. Yeah, that works for me. Great. Oh, back on our design tab, we can now go down to spacing, which is down below. And you can add padding, top, bottom, left and right, which will give things more space, top, bottom, left and right. But again, I'm pretty happy with the way that's working for me. Great, so I'm going to save that, and that's our first slide right there. Little green check mark to save it, and there it is. Now, if you want to set a particular height for the whole slider, go over to your design tab while you're in the main module, the full width slider settings here, go over to design, sizing, roll down, and you can actually set a height. And again, just roll your little arrow or type in a value, make it the actual height that you want it. And again, if you want to, you can choose different heights for tablet and mobile by clicking on the little icon there. I'm actually going to leave mine for the default there. It seems to work fine for me. Great. So I'm going to delete that. Okay, well, we've got our first slide. We're still in the main full width slider settings. Let's duplicate it and let's perhaps have one with a video or an image on the left hand side there. So to duplicate, I'm going to hit the two little squares. Just go into our second one now, which will look identical to our first one. I'm not going to change anything here. I'm just going to add an image or a video, whichever you prefer. And you'll see when I add it, it pops it in on the left hand side and it aligns our title over there. Now for this one, I'd like to take that title down a little bit in size. So let's go back over. Here's the title text. I'm just going to roll down a little bit and let's take it down a little bit in size. That works for me. And we'll change the image in the background there. So still on our content tab, we can go down to the background and let's take the color away this time and we'll use an overlay for this one. So I'm going to go to the image, we'll take that image away, we'll add a new one. And let's use that city one. There we have it, and things are getting a little lost in the background there, that's kind of busy. You can read it, but it's kind of difficult because of the busy background there. So if we go over to design this time and to overlay, use background overlay, and it darkens it out and brings that forward a bit. If you want to change the actual color, click on the little paintbrush field there, and you can either bring the color up so it goes darker, and the right hand one, you've got opacity, so you can slide it down so you can see as much as the image as you want and nicely read all the text and things over here. I think I still need to take that down a little bit in size. So still on the design tab, here's our title text. We did this before, I obviously didn't take it down quite enough. That's more like it. Now, because our slides are slightly different sizes from each other, I'm going to make this a common size in the common settings in a minute. I'm happy with that. Only other things I want to do, let could put some round corners on there perhaps and move the button to the right hand side. So let's go on down. Here's our button. If I move this across to the left so you can see. I'm simply going to align it to the right. Great. And for that image, if we go back up, there's the image. You can give it rounded corners, let's say 20. That's made that rounded there. And if you wanted to, you could give it a border. I'm going to leave that as it is. I will put a little bit of box shadow on there. Great. So we've got two slides now. I'm not going to do any more than that. I'm sure you figured out how to do it, but I want this to order, automate. And I also want both slides to be the same size. And now we've got more than one slide on there. When I hover over, you can see the navigation and the pagination dots on the bottom. So let's save this and it'll take us back to our main slider module. I'm going to go over to my design. And again, I'm going to go down to sizing. Let's make 
it a common height for all slides by going down to height and rolling it or typing in a value to where we want it. That looks pretty good to me. Let's say 600. Let's roll it down to 600. Yeah, that's going to work fine. And I want this to animate automatically. So still on the design tab, roll all the way down to the bottom and we've got animation. Now, if you don't see animation at the bottom there, chances are you're in one of your slides. If we go into a slide, design, no animation. So if you don't see it, hit the little green arrow, take you back to the main slider settings, back over to design, down to the bottom. Here's animation. I'm going to turn that on so it automatically animates. It's set to do it every seven seconds. I'm going to change mine to perhaps every five seconds, 5,000 milliseconds. And I want it to continue automatic slide on hover. That's if they put their mouse on it. It's not going to stop if you put that to yes. I like it to stop so they can read things, look at the images and click on things if they need to. So I'm going to leave it just like it is. And you just need to rinse and repeat for more slides. Obviously, I'm going to leave mine at two. And we should be good to go. So let's save our changes here. We'll go down and save the page changes, little purple button at the bottom. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And exit the visual builder. And there it is, there's our little hero section slider. That should roll around every five seconds. And we've got two slightly different slides there. Like I say, you can add more very easily. Let's get that site back up. In our next video, we'll move on down to the about section down here. Really easy to do. And at the end, we'll do the menu and hook all these sections up. So there you go, guys. There's a how to make your first hero slider with a Divi scene. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our site. If you have any questions, please put them down below in the comments. I'll do my best to make a demo video for you. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.